Welcome back to Cosmic Comic Clips. This is Batman as FK. We're diving into absolute Batman number two today. Oh, yeah. Things pick up right where we left off, uh -huh. with Batman facing off against that brutal party animals gang. That's right. And it's fascinating to see how Snyder portrays Batman's fighting style in this issue. He's really pushing the limits of that no-kill rule. Yeah. You see Batman unleash a level of brutality we don't usually associate with the character, right. leaving the party animals battered and broken. It makes you wonder if this more aggressive approach is truly effective right. in the long run, or if it might backfire and create even more chaos in Gotham. Yeah. What do you think? It's a good question, and one that I think Snyder wants us to ponder. On the one hand, this Batman is clearly sending a message, yeah. don't mess with him. But on the other hand, could this level of violence escalate things in Gotham's underworld? Right. And how will it impact his relationships with allies like Alfred, oh, yeah. who we see is already questioning Batman's methods? Speaking of Alfred, it's wild to see him as an MI6 agent, not the typical butler figure. What do you make of that twist? It's definitely a departure from the traditional portrayal, but I think it adds an intriguing layer to the story. Yeah. Alfred becomes this skeptical observer, almost like an audience surrogate, yeah, okay. who is trying to make sense of Batman's actions. His analytical perspective provides a nice contrast to the over-the-top action. And it's not just Alfred who's different. The whole supporting cast has been reimagined. We see Jim Gordon in a relationship with Martha Wayne. Yeah. Talk about unexpected. Yeah. And Bruce Wayne grew up with a group of friends who will eventually become his iconic Rhodes Gallery. Yeah, that's a brilliant twist, seeing Bruce's childhood connection to characters like Harvey Dent, Oswald, Cobblepot, Edward Nigma, and Waylon Jones. It makes you wonder, are their destinies predetermined? Wow. Or could Bruce's influence change their paths? It adds a whole new dimension to their future adversarial relationships. It really makes you think about the nature versus nurture debate, doesn't it? It does. And speaking of Bruce, we get glimpses into his emotional state in this issue with flashbacks to the traumatic night his father died. Absolutely. Even though this Batman is portrayed as incredibly tough, we still see the lingering impact of that trauma adding depth to his character. It's clear that Snyder is trying to show us a different side of Batman, one that is more complex and perhaps more human than we've seen before. I agree, and I think that's one of the things that makes this comic so compelling. It's not just about the action. It, Although the action is top-notch, thanks to Nick Dragata's incredible art, it's also about exploring the psychological and emotional depths of these iconic characters. That high-stakes poker game where Bruce interacts with his future enemies is a perfect example. Yeah. You can feel the tension building with every hand. And Dragata's art really shines in that scene, capturing the characters' expressions and the game's intensity. It's a masterclass in visual storytelling. Mm. And the way Snyder uses dialogue to hint at the future conflicts between these characters is brilliant. Mm. It's like you're witnessing the seeds of their rivalry being sown. Before we go further into that, though, let me just remind you all to like, comment, and subscribe to Cosmic Comic Clips. Yeah. Your support means the world to us. Now, where were we? Mm. Ah, yes. This Batman AF concept. It's not just about brutality, is it? Right. There's more to it than that. Definitely. While the violence is definitely amped up in this series, it's balanced with emotional depth and character development. Snyder isn't just trying to shock us with gratuitous violence. Right. He's using it to explore a different facet of Batman, one that is perhaps more primal, more driven by instinct. And yet there's still those moments of classic Batman strategy and cunning. Mm. The way Bruce uses his childhood connections to gather information and resources, for instance. It's a reminder that even in this more brutal iteration, he's still a brilliant tactician. That's a great point. It shows that even though his methods might be different, his goals are still the same. Yeah. To protect Gotham and bring justice to the criminals who plague it. And he's willing to use any means necessary to achieve those goals. It's almost like we're seeing a Batman who is still figuring things out. Right. Still honing his approach. He's not the polished, perfectly controlled Dark Knight we're used to. There's a rawness to him, a sense of urgency that makes him feel both familiar and completely new. I think that's what makes this version of Batman so fascinating. He's both recognizable and unexpected, and that makes him incredibly compelling to read. And the way Snyder weaves humor into the story, even amidst all the darkness and violence, is masterful. Uh -huh. It keeps the story from becoming too heavy or oppressive. You're right. 
That scene where Batman escapes using a giant bat-shaped zip line after taking down a group of party animals is hilarious. Oh, yeah. It's so over the top and absurd, but it yeah. works perfectly. Yeah. It's a reminder that even though this is a darker, grittier Batman, right. it's still a comic book and it should be fun to read. Exactly. And that balance between darkness and humor, between brutality and strategy, is what makes this comic so unique and engaging. We've talked about the plot, the characters, the action, the humor. Right. What's left to discuss? Well, we haven't touched upon one of the most controversial aspects of this issue yet. Okay. The reveal of Batman's new Batmobile. Ah, yes. The Batmobile. Yeah. This isn't your typical sleek, stylish Batmobile, is it? Not at all. This one is massive, heavily armed, and looks more like a tank than a car. Wow. It's definitely a bold design choice by Snyder and Dragata, and it sparked a lot of debate among fans. I bet. Some love it praising its practicality and intimidating presence. Others hate it finding it too bulky and over the top. So it's divisive. It's definitely divisive. Yeah. But love it or hate it, you can't deny that it's a statement piece. Yeah. It reflects this Batman's more aggressive in your face approach. Right. He's not hiding in the shadows anymore. He's making a statement. It's almost like the Batmobile itself is an extension of his personality, isn't it? It is. A symbol of his power and his willingness to use force. Absolutely. And it'll be interesting to see how it factors into the story going forward. Will it be an asset or a liability? Only time will tell. And on that note, let's take a moment to delve a bit deeper into what this issue means for the overall story arc. What are your thoughts on where things might go from here? Well, the ending definitely hints at a major confrontation between Batman and Black Mask. Ah who has been orchestrating all the chaos in Gotham. Yeah. And with Batman's new, more brutal approach, it's going to be interesting to see how that clash plays out. Black Mask is a cunning and ruthless villain. He is. And he's not going to go down without a fight. Nope. And then there's the mystery surrounding Alfred and his true purpose in Gotham. Is he just an observer, or does he have a more active role to play? There are so many questions that this issue raises. Yeah. And that's what makes it so exciting. Mm -hmm. Snyder has created a world that is both familiar and unpredictable, and I, I can't wait to see what he does next. Me neither. <laughs> this is definitely a story that will keep us on the edge of our seats. <laughs> but for now, we'll have to wait for the next issue to see what unfolds. Definitely. Welcome back to Cosmic Comic Clips. We're still deep in the heart of Absolute Batman number two, exploring all the twists and turns Snyder throws our way. And there are a lot of them. This issue isn't just about a more brutal Batman. It really makes you rethink what you know about the character and his world. You mentioned earlier that this Batman feels like he's still figuring things out. Hmm. Does that make him more relatable or does it take away from his mystique as the Dark Knight? That's a great question. And I think it depends on what kind of Batman story you're looking for. If you want the classic infallible Batman who always has a plan, this might not be the comic for you. Yeah. But if you're interested in seeing a Batman who is more vulnerable, more human, then I think this issue really delivers. And what about the way his past is intertwined with his future enemies? Mm -hmm. Does knowing them as children make him more hesitant to use force, or does it fuel his anger? Again, that's something Snyder leaves open to interpretation. You can see moments where Bruce seems to hesitate, where maybe a flicker of his old friendship with Harvey or Oswald shines through. But then there are other moments where he's absolutely ruthless, like he's trying to bury those memories under a wave of violence. It's almost like he's battling his own internal demons as much as he's fighting the criminals of Gotham. And speaking of Gotham, this version feels even more corrupt and hopeless than usual. Right. Does that amplify the Batman AF concept, or does it make his mission seem even more futile? I think it definitely heightens the stakes. This Gotham feels like it's on the brink of collapse, and Batman is the only thing standing between order and complete anarchy. Wow. It makes his methods, even the brutal ones, to me more understandable, maybe even necessary. It's like he's fighting fire with fire, using brutality to combat a city that has already succumbed to violence. Mm. And yet, as we discussed earlier, there's still that underlying question is he making things better or worse in the long run? Exactly. And I think that's one of the things that makes this comic so thought-provoking. Yeah. It doesn't give you easy answers. It forces you to confront the complexities of vigilantism, mm. the moral gray areas that Batman often operates in. And it challenges our own perceptions of who Batman is and what he represents. Is he a symbol of hope, or is he just another symptom of Gotham's decay? Snyder doesn't shy away from these questions, and that's what makes the series so compelling. It's a Batman story that isn't afraid to get dark, to explore the psychological toll that this kind of life takes on a person. It's definitely not your typical superhero comic. Yeah. But for fans who are looking for something deeper, something that challenges the status quo, 
I think this is a must read. I agree. And it's not just the writing that makes this issue stand out. Dragata's art is incredible, capturing both the brutal action and the subtle emotional nuances of the characters. Yeah, the way he depicts Batman's fighting style is visceral and impactful. You can almost feel the force behind every punch and kick. Mm -hmm. And the panel layouts, especially during the poker game, are so creative and engaging. It's clear that a lot of thought went into every aspect of this comic, from the writing to the art to the overall design. And that attention to detail really elevates the reading experience. Before we move on, I just want to remind everyone listening, if you're enjoying this deep dive, please take a moment to like, comment, and subscribe to Cosmic Comic Clips. It helps us reach more comic book fans like you. Absolutely. We appreciate all your support. Now, getting back to Absolute Batman number two, what are some of the key takeaways you think readers should keep in mind? I think the biggest takeaway is that this is a Batman story unlike any we've seen before. It's darker, grittier, and more psychologically complex. It's a Batman who is still trying to find his place in a world that seems to be spiraling out of control. Right. And the choices he makes, the lines he's willing to cross, will have lasting consequences. It's also a story that asks tough questions about the nature of justice, the limits of vigilantism, and the toll that fighting evil takes on the human soul. It's not just about punching bad guys. It's about the internal struggles, the moral dilemmas that make Batman such a compelling and enduring character. Exactly. And I think those are the themes that will continue to resonate as the series progresses. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Cosmic Comic Clips. It's time to wrap up our deep dive into absolute Batman number two. And I have to say, this issue has really gotten me thinking. Yeah, it's definitely a conversation starter. Snyder has packed so much into this one issue. Yeah. From the brutal action to the complex character dynamics to the thought-provoking themes. And that ending, it leaves you with so many questions about where the story could go next. The confrontation looming between Batman and Black Mask. Yeah. The mystery surrounding Alfred's true purpose in Gotham. Right. It's all incredibly intriguing. And let's not forget the introduction of that divisive Batmobile. Love it or hate it. It's clear that it's going to play a significant role in the story moving forward. Speaking of moving forward, what are your overall thoughts on this new direction for Batman. Do you think this Batman AF concept has staying power or is it just a temporary gimmick? I think it has the potential to be more than just a gimmick, but it all depends on how Snyder handles it. If he continues to explore the psychological complexities of this approach, the internal struggles that Batman faces as he embraces a more brutal path, then I think it could be really compelling. It's like we're seeing Batman at a crossroads. He's lost faith in the traditional methods. The idea that he can simply deter crime by being a symbol of fear. Mm -hmm. He's resorting to more extreme measures because he feels like he has no other choice. And that desperation, that willingness to push himself to the limit, is what makes this version of Batman so fascinating. He's not just a superhero anymore. Right. He's a force of nature capable of both incredible good and terrifying violence. It's almost like Snyder is asking us to reevaluate our own ideas about justice and what it means to fight for what's right. Is there a point where the ends justify the means? Can you truly fight darkness without becoming consumed by it? These are questions that have haunted Batman for decades, and I think Snyder is offering a fresh perspective on them. He's not afraid to challenge the status quo, to push the boundaries of what a Batman story can be. And that's what makes this comic so exciting. Yeah. It's not just a superhero story. It's a story about the human condition, about the choices we make when faced with impossible odds. And it's a story that will stay with you long after you finish reading it. Yeah. It's the kind of comic that sparks conversations that makes you think about the world in a new way. So if you're looking for a Batman story that is bold, unconventional, and thought-provoking, then Absolute Batman number two is definitely worth checking out. It's a wild ride, and we're only just getting started. And that's all the time we have for today's deep dive. But don't worry, we'll be back soon with more insightful discussions about the world of comics. Until then, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep reading. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Cosmic Comic Clips for more deep dives into the world of comics.